teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. He's saying all scriptures God breathed. Um, I was on the trap thinking it's Paul breathed or it's Timothy breathed. Um, but it's really God talking to us right now through Paul. Um, really, the whole book of Bible should be in red writing, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, based off that, it's really God talking the whole time. Um, so he, he makes sure to let everyone know what he's saying right now is God talking to us and not him. It comes directly from God and carries his authority. Scripture is profitable for four things. And I love this. It, it kind of reminded me of those shampoo bottles you'll sometimes see on the shelves. The foreign ones. You know, it'll clean your hair, it'll clean your body, it'll clean your feet, and it'll clean your face. It does everything. It's, it's a foreign one of shampoo. And he kind of refers to the Bible as like one of those, like a foreign one shampoo. It has four things. It does everything for you. It teaches us God's truth. It corrects us when we go astray, guides us to make things right, and training us in righteousness. And you need all four of those things to ensure that you are fully prepared for what may take place. Without one of those things, you will not be fully prepared. You'll be 75% prepared. Um, you want to be 100% prepared. And so that was really an awesome part for Paul. And then you get to the final chapter of the short book, chapter 4. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom I give you in this charge. Now the word charge didn't really make sense to me. It was, uh, I give you this charge. Uh, usually when I think of charge, I think of running through something. Um, so I went ahead and I just double checked what that meant. It's a great definition. This is strongly urgent for both. And so he's not asking Paul. He's not giving him an option. It's a legal command of the vote, or in other words, um, he's demanding Timothy right here. And so he gives this, he gives Timothy this command. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction. And this verse is very important. The word preach. I love I love searching this up, the word preach. Because this is my first time preaching. You know, it's good to know the definitions. Um, and it kind of, you know, it, it's, a, it's a big definition. The Greek definition is to proclaim as a herald carrying the idea of declaring the royal message. And so I'm not just you know, just having kind of normal banter talking. It does if I'm a herald carrying the king's message. Which is really cool because it's the same for Timothy. Preaching wasn't merely discussing ideas. It's delivering an authoritative message on behalf of God. And so when you do that, you have to preach the gospel boldly, like a herald preaching it, preaching the king's message. And that was, that was a really cool definition to define. And then you go on to verse 3. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say that their itching ears, to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, Discharge all the duties of your ministry. This part made me almost think I was accidentally reading Revelations. It's talking about times that's happening right now, going to happen in the future, and happen back then. It's this whole book is very applicable today. What Paul's going through is very applicable today. His suffering. Um, we don't see that much in here, but it's very prevalent um, all over the country. Uh, just that persecution. And the hard thing is, is not only does it say people will be close-minded, but they're also going to turn their ear and the sound doctrine will dissipate. And so right now, and even in the future, that doctrine is going to slowly disappear. 
And even if that fund is disappearing, the people are still going to end up being very close minded to the sound doctrine. So it's getting it's progressively just going to get more and more difficult to really know the real truth of the scripture. And Paul, Paul mentions that here. And then you go on in verse 6. For I'm already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time of my departure is near. I fought the good fight, I finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have won for his appearance. And here, Paul says he fought the good fight. He ran the race. And to me, as, a, as an athlete, you know, every time I hear, I automatically think he's on like this track race. And the track is the race of life. He's right, you know, right almost to that finish line. So he's a little more behind him, you know, face catching up. And there's suffering all throughout that race. He's letting like, Tipsy you know there was suffering. He was persecuted. He had people betray him. But there's no better feeling than passing that finish line. And he really needs to let Timothy know because, especially as Christians, with that message Paul said earlier, all of us are going to be persecuted. All of us are going to face hard times. All of us will have to be able to get through those. But we have to know God is with us. And He's the creator of the universe. He's the one watching over you through those hard times. And that there will be no better feeling at the end of that, when you're almost at that finish line, knowing you fought a good fight, that you ran the race, you got through it all, and you did it well, and that you're set to earn that crown of righteousness from God at that finish line. And Paul went through a lot. Um, I had to look these up. He, he said he was suffering, uh, and he was persecuted. Three areas. And that was Antioch, um, Iconium, and Lystra. And I, I was like, you know, reading through this, I didn't know Paul was as persecuted as he was. In Antioch, which is the capital of Syria, he, which means served against, strange enough, Paul was from that, but uh, served against. It's also the first place where followers of Christ were called Christians. Antioch. And they just, they, they kicked Paul out. Paul finds himself in Iconium. They try to stone him in Iconium, he barely escapes. Now, warm welcome him over there for Paul, and then he finds himself in this trip where he meets Timothy's family. And takes Timothy on as sort of his apprentice. Um, so that Timothy could learn under Paul. But Paul, unfortunately, was stoned and left for dead in Lystra. But still, he reminds Timothy to remain faithful. And then, as we finish this uh, little section, from verse, verse 9, our personal remarks, it says, do your best to come to me quickly. For Demos, because he loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia and Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, because he is helpful to me in my ministry. I sent Titus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas and my scrolls, especially in the parchments. Alexander the metalworker did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will pay him for what he has done. You too shall be on your guard against him, because he strongly opposed our message. At my first offense, no one can come to my support, but everyone deserted me. May not be held against them, but the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength, so that through my through me the message might be uh, fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. So here Paul reflects deeply 
about his life and what he's gone through. His betrayals from Demos, who left for worldly desires. But his friends, who stayed like Luke. And it's just so, it's so interesting how someone like Paul still needed those companions, that fellowship from Luke and from Timothy. You know, in that prison, um, because those are basic human needs, just that fellowship, sometimes you just need that, where all of you just get together and that feeling just arises where you know you're not, you're not alone, people are going through the same things you are, but, and Paul just, he needs that, you know, he needs Luke and Timothy in that, in that last area. Paul's final words are a reminder of the power of fellowship and the reality that even great leaders like him need others. But more importantly, he also shows his unshakable faith in God's plan throughout this whole process, this whole life. He made he remained steadfast and unshakable. And reading all of this, it, it brought me to uh, to think about, you know, he says all Christians will be persecuted. I was like, man. I, I, maybe my time is coming. I haven't really been persecuted. So I was thinking, what, what are hard times that I've had come through that maybe, you know, seem too hard? And the first thing that came to my mind was closing down my dad's store, uh, Best to Go, is a mattress store here in Helena. I was just a sales representative trying to sell mattresses, and one day he comes to me and he's like, hey, Andrew. I need all of this upstairs area for our downstairs, and the downstairs is already jam-packed with mattresses. And so I was like, this is impossible, we can't fit it all in there. He's like, I rented storage units. You're not gonna, you're gonna take some of it downstairs and the rest of the storage units. I'm like, I guess we could try that. I mean, who's helping me? He's like, Unibreath. And Jonathan and William, maybe, they're free. I was like, how much time? He's like, you gotta get done today. The people are coming in tomorrow. And so I was like, man, you can't just really toss these things on, you know, just this huge project. And so I had no other option but to get it done that day. And so we were there until about one in the morning, just emptying all the upstairs, taking it downstairs, taking it to units. Then about a week later, he comes to me, he's like, Henry, I need you to empty all the downstairs and put it in storage units. I'm like, how long do we have? He's like, you have it before they open tomorrow. <laughs> and so I was like, again, this is this is a lot of work. And I'm like, who's helping? He's like, Brett, you can let me jump in too if you want. And so I was like, all right. And this was on Halloween. I had to get much candy that day. Um, and so we went down there. We just got to work because we had no other option. We had to get it all done. And we were there until about 15 minutes before they opened the next day. We stayed up over the whole night just getting that whole thing clear. It's like a. Uh, on those cooking shows and they get to the last second and they toss the last, last uh, leaf on their plate and the clock goes out. That's what it felt like with me. I, I vacuum the last area, right, they open. But there's no better feeling than getting all that done. You know, when I knew I was nearing the finish line, that feeling got greater and greater until I finally, you know, finished that last vacuum. I was like, man, I can do anything. Like, I hate to have the mindset I had before I got it done. I love to have the mindset I have now. Like, ask me to do something again, you know? Yeah. And so I just love that feeling. And so I can't imagine that feeling when you've been fighting your whole life and you hear that finish line. When you know you're in the race and you know you fought the fight and you're still in a relationship with God and fighting for that crown of righteousness from Him. So in conclusion of Paul's teaching, it's just a very applicable teaching for us today. He's not only speaking to us, but he's speaking to society in general what's going to happen. He's warning us, and he's letting us know how to fight it. If there's a title to all of this, I believe it would be something along the lines of preach the word, be faithful, in season and out of season, and endure to the end. To be strong, no matter the challenge we face, we are called to finish the race, while trusting that God will be with us every step of the way. Amen. And so this was a, I haven't read 
through 2 Timothy in a while. And it's really refreshing to read again because, especially nowadays when things are so tight and things can be so, you know, people are so judgmental nowadays. And, you know, if you pick one side, that means you don't make hate the other side. To where people are more and more close minded, people have their own ideas. And it's just a, a time where you really have to know who you are, know who you serve, and a time where you'll have to endure and fight to the end. And so that really impressed me, really impresses me how Paul lived his life, how he remained steadfast and happy. Because he knew he fought the good race, he knew he's going to get that crown here shortly. He knew that Timothy was going to do well. And he knew that his message would be heard for generations and generations to come, which is very amazing. So, this is just awesome. So, let's pray and thank Paul for this message from God. Lord, we come before you, grateful for the example of faithfulness and perseverance we see in Paul's life. We thank you for your word, which equips us for every good work, and for the reminder that we are always in your presence. Lord, help us take Paul's passage to heart, to preach your word boldly, and to remain steadfast in our faith, and to endure whatever challenges come our way. Father, when we face difficulties, give us the strength to fight the good fight and to finish the race, always keeping our eyes on Jesus, just as Paul trusted in your faithfulness until the end. May we too live in a way that honors you confidently and to look forward to the crown of righteousness. Lord, I ask you to strengthen us to stand firm in truth, to love with patience, and to serve with humility. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, God, and let our lives be a reflection of your grace and truth to those around us. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.